Hello, and welcome to this lesson on a crucial aspect of procurement in large companies with decentralized departments, power dynamics. In this lesson, we will explore how to organize power within a decentralized procurement function and align headquarters with regional procurement functions to ensure consistency and optimal performance. Organizational structures are commonly understood as formal arrangements that define roles and responsibilities. However, management theorist Elliot Jacks emphasized the concept of an accountability hierarchy instead of just an organizational hierarchy. This highlights that the purpose of the hierarchy is to establish accountability by identifying who is responsible for what and who has the authority to make decisions. In essence, any organizational structure determines tasks, responsibilities and power allocation. This accounts for organizations as a whole, but also for procurement teams. In the context of procurement, the first two aspects, tasks and responsibilities, can be seen as technical considerations. We organize tasks logically and assign responsibilities accordingly. For example, it is logical to centralize procurement tasks under one department and hold the procurement director accountable for achieving objectives in this area. However, power, the final aspect, swiftly becomes a political issue. Since discussions about power tend to be uncomfortable, they are often presented as technical concerns of finding the most logical organizational structure. Yet, when it comes to power, individuals often seek solutions that benefit them personally, rather than focusing on what is genuinely best for the organization. As a leader in procurement, managing this issue is essential. Managing the issue in procurement begins with recognizing that challenges surrounding decision-making authority, who decides what, often arise in decentralized settings specifically between the procurement department at headquarters and regional procurement teams. Consider a scenario where headquarters chooses a vendor for background checks, but a region prefers a local vendor and starts using them instead. Does the region have the right to make that decision? Now, let's imagine that you allow the region to choose its own background check vendor. The region then decides to implement different checks than those used by headquarters. Do they have the right to make this process change? Since the answers to these questions are usually context dependent, as a leader at headquarters, you must continuously monitor regional activities. On one hand, decentralization is necessary to enable regions to make swift decisions that align with their specific context. On the other hand, regions often try to expand their decision-making scope, requiring headquarters to consistently maintain overall consistency and efficiency by reining them in. A situation that becomes challenging to control typically arises when the local business leader perceives the local procurement manager to report to them. This is a situation you definitely want to avoid. Clear communication with local procurement managers and business partners is crucial, emphasizing the importance of reporting to central procurement and keeping them informed. To prevent such situations, make it evident from the start that the procurement job reports to central procurement and involvement in the hiring decision begins with procurement. Additionally, whenever feasible, consider bringing regional procurement personnel to headquarters for meetings or training to foster bonding with the rest of the team. This tension between headquarters' desire for control and regions' inclination to make independent decisions is not unique to the procurement department. Organizations in various domains face this challenge. The key lies in maintaining close communication with regional procurement personnel and potentially rotating them in and out of headquarters. This ensures they recognize where their loyalty lies. However, simply staying in touch with the regional procurement office is not enough. To effectively maintain a successful balance between headquarters, procurement and the regions, you need to explicitly define the expectations around the power dynamic, both in terms of structure and decision-making. Personally, I prefer the option of reporting to headquarters. However, you will find that all these solutions share common elements. In all cases, you want to strive for consensus as much as possible. You want to avoid a dominating headquarters through a formal outline of decision-making power using a Raki chart. A Raki chart aims to establish decision-making rules. Raki stands for the four key metrics that need to be assigned to stakeholders involved in reporting structures. Raki clarifies the specific roles are responsible, who performs the work, accountable, who is ultimately responsible for the work, Consulted, who needs to be consulted regarding the work? And informed, who needs to be informed about the decisions or actions? The Raki chart can help alleviate tensions caused by decentralization by clearly defining who is responsible for what. For example, the training department may prefer to choose its own learning management system software instead of using the tools provided by the standard procurement system. 
each local procurement manager may have their own approach to onboarding. Different ideas may arise regarding performance management. If everyone is allowed to make their own decisions on software, processes or policies, each unit and department will end up doing things differently. This is human nature. Moreover, other regions may be doing the same, resulting in increased costs for the company. By using Raki, you can strive the right balance between departmental autonomy and central control, ensuring everyone is on the same page. These metrics can also be helpful in managing power dynamics within small teams or organizations where expectations may not be clear. However, it is important to note that there will always be gray areas open to interpretation and disagreement. Don't expect a Raki chart to eliminate all conflicts regarding decision-making power. You will still need to utilize your skills in navigating paradoxes to encourage debates and disagreements so that challenges can be brought to the surface and resolved. So far, we've been looking at things from a headquarters-centric perspective. Now let's consider the viewpoint of local procurement leaders regarding headquarters procurement. The main complaint from local procurement is that headquarters is disconnected. So how can you stay connected with the teams on the ground? The answer is quite simple. Invest time. Spend time in the regions to understand their reality. Foster frequent conversations that build trust and share information, rather than only issuing directives. This helps in making informed decisions aligned with the local context. You can achieve this through informal visits to the regions, working from there for a few days to pick up signals and encourage approachability. Alternatively, organize formal focus groups with regional employees to discuss important topics. To reconcile the central local procurement dilemma, ask two key questions. How can global procurement support local procurement? And how can local procurement support global procurement? Answering these questions generate recommendations for mutual support. Conduct surveys or engage in one-on-one -on -one discussions or joint sessions with local heads for valuable input. That's it. Congratulations on finishing another lesson. In this lesson, you learned that the power dynamics are an important consideration in decentralized procurement and the Raki chart can be a helpful tool for managing power dynamics. Furthermore, you learned that the central and local procurement functions should work together to support each other, which can be done by identifying areas where you can collaborate and share resources with them.